Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming back again to another session. It was, uh, it's been, I hope it's been fantastic for you as it has been for me, uh, having gone through now a couple of our sessions. Uh, I can see our participants are signing in. So I'm going to give it a little bit of time uh, before I introduce Mark as we have our participants sign in. Um, maybe one of the things that I will say now, and I'll say it again a little later, uh, administratively, is that uh, we have the partner presentation by Komau uh, is canceled. And instead, we will have Kristen Davenport start at 4 p.m. So she will start at 4 p.m. The virtual happy hour still remains at 4.30 p.m. Please join us for that. Now, let me introduce um, Mark Harris. He is the CEO of uh, a cool new company, HeroWare. And at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him so he can tell you a little bit about it. Mark, please. Great. Thank you, Joe. And uh, good to get connected uh, with you all. Um, so as Joe mentioned, Mark Harris, CEO of HeroWare, and I'm pleased to introduce you to our company and to officially launch the newest exosuit into the market. Now, we at HeroWare believe in people. We believe in humans. We believe in their abilities, their strength, intelligence, integrity, and dedication to hard work. The human body has an amazing ability to be able to adapt to a huge variety of tasks. Everything from stocking store shelves, to loading a military cargo plane, to palletizing 300 cases of beer in an hour. And importantly, we've got a mind behind it that lets us react to complicated situations in real time and to pursue challenging, complex tasks. It's this combination of physical agility and mental adaptability that allows us to perform so many critical functions in today's economy. Because of this, we believe humans are going to be needed for difficult, physical, often grueling jobs for decades to come. There are many heroes during the, doing this type of work. Firefighters, construction workers, package handlers, case pickers, those who protect us who are in the military, and many, many other professions. They all have tough, but extremely critical jobs. Now these workers are strong, but they're not unbreakable. We all know these jobs take a toll on our bodies. Over time, fatigue, injury, and disability adds up in these and many other professions. The Wearable Robotics Association, the industry it supports, and this very conference is here to help these people. They're here ultimately to help all of us. As we know, 80% of us will have back injury over the course of our lives. Now, most of the people here participating in this virtual conference are dedicating their lives and their careers to solving these issues. We at HearWare are in this fight with you. That's our sole mission and goal to improve the health, safety, and productivity of workers in physically demanding jobs. To that end, we spent the last several years developing a new type of exosuit. We started with a really simple design philosophy. First principles do not interfere with the range of motion of the individual. It's our very ability to move our bodies in complicated ways that allows us to complete such a huge variety of tasks. If we constrain movement, we lose our own utility as humans and our ability to complete many of these tasks. Next, we sought to provide assistance, but only when the user needs it. Otherwise, we need to get the heck out of the way. As Carl nicely put it in his talk, for 90% of the time on the job, workers don't need help. So the primary function of an EXO should be to get out of the way. 
We're excited to introduce the latest exosuit on the market, and you all are the first group outside of the company to see it. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the Apex, an exosuit designed specifically for the needs of logistics workers. It's designed to be low profile, lightweight, and breathable while supporting the low back muscles when the user needs it. There are four key features of the Apex that allows us to provide assistance when it's needed while enabling a full range of motion never before seen on an XO. This combination of features is new to the industry. It's a textile based passive system, so it's a true exosuit. However, it has a modular design, allowing us to fit individuals exactly. And it's dual mode, enabling users to easily turn on and off the assistance. So let's dive into each of these features. The Apex is textile based. We worked with some of the best sports, uh, athletic sportswear designers in the world to create something remarkable. An EXO that's lightweight, breathable, and comfortable. An EXO that conforms to the shape of your body and moves with your body. An EXO that you can forget you're wearing. An EXO that's just a part of you and a part of how you work. An EXO that simply blends into the background. You can see in this image some of the detailed needlework and use of a variety of layered materials to provide the right balance of stretch, support, and breathability. I wish you all were able, uh, wish you all were able to be here in person so you could actually touch and feel the material and the construction quality. But we'll have to set that up for another time, unfortunately. Now we spent a huge amount of development time on improving breathability and reducing heat retention. Our user base often works in hot, humid, non-air conditioned environments. And they need something that doesn't drastically increase their discomfort. We have multiple patent pending ventilation technologies developed during this process that allow air to flow more effectively along the body, removing moisture along the way. You'll also notice that the apex has a very small footprint on the chest, allowing air to flow underneath a loose shirt. Now, just important as breathability is ease of use. The Apex is incredibly easy to put on and take off. So here I am just throwing an Apex on like a backpack, snapping a sternum strap, and putting on the thigh sleeves. Then I pull down on the switch to activate the device so I can get to work. It takes about 25 to 30 seconds to don the, the Apex. And taking it off is even more straightforward about 10 seconds. So this means workers can spend less time fussing around with an EXO and more time working or on a well-deserved break. The Apex is passive. It doesn't have any motors or batteries. It works by leveraging elastic bands that lie in parallel with the user's back muscles and all flowed force along the low back during lifting and leaning. On the left of this slide, this is actually the image from the original 2018 paper uh, published by Carl in his laboratory, and on the right, the Apex. And so the core technology, the way we're approaching this problem has not changed at all through the development cycles. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, the technology was developed at Vanderbilt um, there's been significant amount of data published 
on its ability to reduce low back load. I've got just an example here. Uh, you can reference um, the paper listed uh, down below if you'd like to read more detail on that. Um, but basically on the, uh, on the Y axis here, we've got the back muscle activity over the lifting cycle. In this particular experiment, these were squats. Um, and you can see when the exo was uh, added to the individuals, there was a reduction in muscle activity um, as the squat deepened, which is to be expected as those bands stretch along the back. Now, importantly, we took our updated prototypes out to the field late last year. I spent much of the last six months in warehouses working with, uh, with workers with this technology. And uh, the technology worked on real workers in their native environment. Um, two separate clients, we demonstrated that the device worked just as well as it had in the laboratory. Um, this is an example, EMG, showing the similarities of the reduction. Uh, the experiment was conducted in a similar fashion to the laboratory experiment, and you can see similar reductions. Some of my colleagues, Matt Marino and Matt Yandel, will be presenting the full case studies and data tomorrow. So be sure to check out their sessions for more information on these results. The apex is modular. We made it modular because we found that an exosuit has to fit like a glove. It needs to be fit to the individual based on their specific body type. Chest circumference, thigh circumference, torso length, height, weight, torso to height ratio, and gender, just to name a few of the critical variables uh, needed while fitting. To us, a one-size-fits-all exo is like a one-size-fits-all boot. boot. You know, sure, you can do it, but you're going to sacrifice weight, simplicity, and comfort. To solve this, the Apex has four main components that can be swapped in and out. The first is the back component, which contains all of the mechanical systems, the clutch and the switch. There are straps, which allow torso and chest circumference adjustability. There are the thigh sleeves, which stay snug on denim, cotton, as well as slippery basketball shorts. And finally, there are the bands, which come in a variety of lengths to adjust for height, as well as different strengths. The two elastic strengths can be changed to allow both for different user weights. Generally, a heavier user is going to use a stiffer band, but also you can increase the assistance for individuals who are doing significantly heavier lifts if they need more assistance. This modularity across the board allows us to customize fit to the individual. Now, when we go meet a client on site, we bring a fit kit with us, pictured here. A fit kit contains one of every component of our device in a convenient carry-on size piece of luggage. All told, there's 56 unique fit combinations with the Apex, so it can fit every person on the workforce. And if a worker leaves and a new worker needs to utilize their Apex, a client can simply order an additional band, thigh sleeve, or straps that are needed to fit that worker. So these can be swapped in and out on the fly to fit the worker that it needs to fit. Now from the beginning, we designed the Apex with a woman's body in mind. We have clients who have up to 60% of their logistics staff who are female and existing devices on the market didn't appear to design with them in mind. We wanted to fix that, and we're proud to announce the first exosystem with a female-specific design and fit. The straps in particular conform to a woman's body and curve around the bust, maintaining the full function of the device while providing extreme comfort.
the Apex is dual mode. It has the ability with a touch of a button to have the assistance turned on or off. A first for textile based exosuits and another patent pending technology feature. There's a switch on the left shoulder of the Apex up and out of the way, yet easy to reach with either hand. The switch controls a mechanical clutch on the back of the device, which either routes forces through the large elastic bands along the back or through a spring-loaded clutch mechanism within the clutch body. So here's a video showing um, the ability to switch between modes. Simply pull down to activate it and press the button to unactivate. And you can see here I'm using both hands very easy to modulate between the two. And again, we placed it up here because our study showed that in no circumstances does a case picker put anything in this area of their body. Their chest area, they're lifting boxes, they're reaching behind pallets, um, but this area is uh, both easy to reach and it does not uh, interact with the environment at all. Now, with the dual modes, you can easily switch between tasks. So I'll show you an example of that here. So in this situation, I'm going up and I'm lifting a box first in unassisted mode. So note how the bands are not being activated in this situation. I turn it to assisted mode, and now I'm getting assistance, and that force is routing through those bands. You can turn it back off, and with the full range of motion, you can do some pretty extreme movements. You go back to work, you switch it on again. And you'll note here you can walk in assisted mode, which was really important for our clients. And so this dual mode in general was a huge deal for customers. It meant that people could relax on their lunch breaks without having to get out of their XO could mean they could comfortably jump into a forklift or a truck or simply walk a long distance across an 800,000 square foot facility without fighting against their EXO. When you get a chance to try it on, you'll realize there's almost no resistance. So what else? So we didn't believe it was enough just to have a great exosuit. We've surrounded this exosuit with a suite of services that make it truly work ready for our clients. Hero Care 360 is a program to assist our clients with training, storage, cleaning, and maintaining their devices to work for them in their environments on their workers and performing their tasks. We call that program Hero Care 360 and it comes with every unit. So we think this combination of features is an absolute game changer in the industry. The Apex is an EXO that's worth more than just the sum of its parts. So here are the high level statistics. Weighs 3.4 pounds for the largest size of the device. It offloads the low back by 50 pounds with every lift. Fits both males and females, is extremely comfortable and has the best range of motion we've seen yet on an XO. And finally, at $1,199, that's something that companies can afford to roll out to their entire workforce. So we're launching something that not only helps and protect workers, but is something that workers actually want to wear every day. And that's exactly what's been missing in this industry. Not just user acceptance of the technology, but true worker demand. So the wait is over. To support the hardworking people of the world, HeroWare is ready with Exos for All.
Thank you guys for your attention and having us uh, be a part of this conference. We'd love to hear from you or better yet, get you in an apex and let you take it for a test drive. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mark. That uh, seems like a fantastic system. And yes, I have never seen that before. So thanks for um, uh, sharing that with us here. It looks like we have exactly 10 minutes. So let me share a couple questions um, from the group. Uh, first question is, what do the users say in a uh, more of a qualitative sense? Yeah, so we've done a number of, uh, of subjective uh, surveys based on this, and some more of this, again, will be presented tomorrow, the raw data of those results. But the number that blew me away was when we had people spend three to four hours on, in this device, including running through experimental protocol and using it in their daily job out on the floor, we had 100% of those users say they could utilize this daily while they were working. And that blew me away. That was also our early stage, our earlier stage prototypes. And we've added a lot of improvements since then. So to me, that is the true test. Not how much it offloads the back, but really do people want to use this day in and day out. And thus far, the early data has been showing they really want to use it. Great. All right. Let's get to some other questions here. Um, there's two questions regarding the actuation or your springs. So uh, how, do you, how does the system store energy? Mm -hmm. Store energy, well, you're just, uh, you're pulling along the elastic bands on the back. And so when you're going down into a squat position, um, it is offloading a portion of that by basically loading those springs and that energy is returned as you're going up, back up. So again, when, uh, when Matt Yandel presents some more of those data uh, tomorrow, you'll be able to see we both reduce low back muscle forces on the way down and on the way up. Gotcha, great. Um, here's a question. Um, how does the performance differ from a back brace? From a back brace? Yeah, so everything I've seen in the data is that back braces basically don't work. Um, we, uh, I know that FedEx mandated back braces back in the 90s. They did a five-year internal study and saw no reduction in injuries. Um, and all the biomechanical uh, data that my teams looked at has shown no injury reductions in back braces. Um, we know that these types of passive um, technologies do offload the low back. So we know biomechanically they work very differently than than back braces and are much more likely over the long term to reduce injuries, but we still need to get the data to demonstrate injury reduction over the long term. And that's probably going to take another year or two of detailed studies to really demonstrate that. Gotcha. Okay, uh, here's another question. How many of these uh, prototypes have you made so far? Mm -hmm. So where we are right now is we're ramping up our manufacturing process. So we will be launching 50 of these units this summer for longer term testing uh, with a handful of clients we're going deep with. And then we will have a larger number of devices available uh, in Q4. Gotcha. All right, here are two questions regarding range of fit, uh, height and weight. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, so we designed this to fit 95% of the population. Um, so we have tested thus far from five foot two, 110 pound females up to six, six, 280 plus pound males. Um, and we're able to, uh, to fit that full range of individuals. Uh, but we need to continue to do further testing uh, along that. Uh, but we have fit in the high numbers of dozens of individuals, um, probably 50, 60 individuals uh, with the device. And it's worked thus far with everyone. Gotcha. Yeah, that's usually a, a big issue, right? Is, is fit uh, with XOs. Here's a question. Um, 
can you expand upon the Hero Care 360 suite? What is that? What do you have in that mm -hmm. service? Yeah, yeah. So at a very high level, what we've done is we've developed training protocols to assist with. I think many people who have been to the Wearable Robotics Association before are familiar with, with Matt Marino. Uh, he's a member of our team and has developed uh, our suite of training tools. Uh, so we work directly with ergonomics professionals uh, of these organizations to help them roll out and explain uh, how XOs can work for, uh, for their team. Um, I mentioned storage, cleaning, and, uh, and maintenance as well as the other three aspects. So we assist them in how do you actually store these? If I deliver 50 you, to you, what do you do with them? How do you handle them? How often do you clean them, et cetera? Um, so we handle that with our clients. And then the main, maintainability, it's more around employee turnover. So there is very significant employee turnover with logistics. Uh, we see 25 to 40% year over year turnover of employees. So making sure these devices fit um, their employees, if that person leaves and someone else comes in, is really important. And the basic way we do that is, is we have one XO, scale, or one XO per person. Um, so you get the fit dialed for that individual and it's theirs. So they hang that up in the end of the day, that's the one they pull down the next day. And that was critical for our customers because generally people don't want to share sweaty gear. So end of their shift, they spray it down, hang it up to dry, and the next day they use it again. But the issue is if that person leaves now and Sally leaves and Joe joins and he's a, he's a different fit, how do you then leverage that same exo? And so that's where our modularity comes in. And so they could just purchase a new pair of thigh sleeves or a new strap system and swap those components out and reuse that exo with that new individual after you decontaminate and sanitize the suit. So HeroCare 360 basically incorporates that whole suite of services. Gotcha. So let me, uh, we have three minutes. So I'm going to ask you two questions, but if you can kind of respond to those in like 30 seconds each. Yep. Uh, first is, does the elastic band creep over time? And uh, so, how often would you have to replace bands? Does it creep? So you mean, does it, uh, do, does it wear down? Is that what you're? Yes. Yeah. 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 And so we're still doing some of the long-term cycle testing on that. We expect the bands to have well over a six month life, uh, but we're doing some of that testing over the next couple months to have a much more accurate answer on that. Got it. So this will be the last, well, maybe last question, one more question, but uh, here is auditor from Germany. Do you have experiences with usage in agricultural sector? We have not. We have not. We have been doing testing uh, with manufacturers, uh, with large logistics companies, and with, uh, with uh, retailers, alcohol, beverage, et cetera. Um, some um, and all of those tests have been similar in that they have been people moving large amounts of heavy objects in a warehouse setting. Um, so we have not done any testing yet on agricultural, but if there's interest there, uh, feel free to reach out to us through the website on our contact page and love to get back to you on that. And don't forget, we have the uh, happy hour today at 4.30 and hopefully Mark, uh, you might be able to uh, connect with Klaus, who's asking that question uh, as well. Um, I think at this time, uh, we are about 30 seconds out, so perfect timing. Mark, that was a fantastic uh, demo. Now I clearly understand your product, and um, I am very happy that you are also focused on the back end logistics, training, cleaning services, because I would say that is the key comment that we're hearing over and over again from the buyer community. So thank you, Mark. Uh, looks like a fantastic product. Uh, for the rest of you, uh, um, we will see you at noon Eastern time uh, with a presentation by Toyota and Kia Motors. Uh, and don't forget, uh, we have several fantastic speakers 
and a partner presentation by Autobot. And let's see if they will also announce a new product or not. We'll see. Um, and then uh, we have uh, a presentation after that and then the virtual happy hour. Thanks again, Mark. And thank you everybody for participating. And we'll see you here uh, in a couple minutes. Thank you. Bye-bye.